The doctor is in City Health with uh, Dr. Yvette Liu, the real deal, sitting on the couch, never minces words, always brings us the details. This is what sort of started us off. The cover of McLean's magazine, you can pick it up on newsstands or get it on Next Issue, but they've literally sprayed the measles over the entire cover. It's a big problem right now, isn't it? It is a big problem. There's been an outbreak in North America for the last few months or so, it started with the Disneyland stuff. We did see it in the Valley as well. Many anti-vaxxers are those who have religious beliefs. Yes. They believe, okay, that's not what we do. We're not going to vaccinate. But more and more we're seeing people who think that homeopathic alternatives are actual non-vaccination options. Jackie Gillespie on her Facebook page said, can you have an expert on, on non-vaccination options? Are there non-vaccination options? So. No sods are the homeopathic remedies that that are sometimes offered as an alternative to vaccination. Now the problem with these natural health products is that they're not subject to the same level of evidence and science that pharmaceutical products are subject to. In order for a vaccine to approve to be approved, it has to go through many, many levels of evidence and trials. And they have to have the best level of trial, which is called a randomized controlled trial. And this kind of trial is what we consider gold standard evidence. Homeopathic remedies are approved as natural health products so they do not have to have these kinds of trials and that's why Health Canada on the homeopathic nosos actually has a warning that says this product is not intended to be an alternative to vaccination because the evidence is just not there okay so when people say well that's big pharma talking doctor isn't it's big pharma this business that wants to take all of our money and fill us full of chemicals where the homeopathic community want us to be well isn't it big business too? Yes, so the people who make homeopathic products are also, well, we could all, almost call them little pharma, right? It, it, they also make money, they're businesses, they're companies, they're there to make a product and sell it. Right, with less scrutiny, as you said, without the gold yeah, standard of testing. Yeah, and we testing. don't have the gold standard for them, we don't have the evidence, and the scary thing is that what happens is these vaccines don't have the evidence, or these products, I don't even want to call them vaccines, right. they don't have the evidence to, to show that they work, and people who take them think that they are protected, and they're not protected. The evidence is just not there, and what happens then is that we have these people who are unvaccinated in the community, and the levels of herd immunity come down. I was about to go to herd immunity. What exactly does that mean? So I like to think of it uh, as we think of animals in a herd. Okay. So if you have small animals, weak animals, the larger animals in a herd will huddle around them when a predator comes in the environment. And in that way, they can protect the young and the vulnerable from the predator. So in the same way, people who are vaccinated form a barrier preventing the disease from spreading to the people who can't get vaccines in our community, like the babies or the people who have diseases that don't allow them to be vaccinated. So say a disease comes in, if most people are vaccinated, then it sort of bounces off the immunized people, it can't spread. But if there aren't enough people who are vaccinated, then disease can jump from unvaccinated person to unvaccinated person, and the diseases can spread very rapidly in the community. Think about measles. One person with measles can spread it to 12 to 18 people. Measles is very contagious. It can hang around in the air for two hours, even after the person who has measles is gone. It can stay on surfaces. And that's why measles can spread so rapidly. That's why we worry about measles. Right. And as a physician, because now the discussion is, should unvaccinated individuals, children, most notably be uh, banned from schools and from doctor's offices, you have a family practice. Yes. When somebody is present in your office with the measles, how do you handle that? Do you, or, or the unvaccinated? Well, for people who think they have a, a, a severely infectious disease like this, we try to get them to call the office first, and often we'll just send them to the hospital. Right. If they show up in the office, we'll isolate them, we'll put them in a back room so that they can't spread it to everyone in the waiting room because that would not be very good It would be at counterproductive, all. yes. Exactly. So there are doctors who do not allow people who are unvaccinated in their offices. I'm not one of them because I believe it's important to engage these people. It's important to give them information. And these are people who might be getting these infectious diseases, so it's important that they have a doctor who knows what's going on and who can care for these children should they catch these horrible infectious diseases. Like measles, one to two out of a thousand people with measles will die of the measles. One out of a thousand people who catch the measles will have permanent brain damage. 
Wow. So these are high, high numbers. Those are high numbers. Dr. Yvette Lou, always a pleasure to have you on here, giving us the straight goods. You can get more information, <clears throat> pardon me, at immunizebc.ca. Please keep the conversation going on our Facebook page. Chime in with your opinions. We want to hear both sides. Uh, we hope we give a fair and balanced uh, view of it through the medical community, because clearly you're, you are not looking to ban people from your practice and yet urging people to be properly vaccinated. Thank you, doctor.